DMT. This is how I see it. How many people in the country, deep down, are unsatisfied with their life on some level, but never really start questioning if DMT, if something like this is introduced to society on a wide scale, it would screw things up. To be perfectly honest, I get a little bit scared every time I do it. For, you know, for good reason, you have to get yourself mentally prepared. You should not do this lightly. What if half of society is all of those people took DMT and realized, shit, my ego is something I shouldn't be listening to that much? Yes, um, threat to society. I mean, it depends what you believe about why drugs are illegal in the first place. But I think it's more likely that the drugs that are illegal are the ones that promote you as an economic unit in society, so they encourage you to be more productive and to consume more, maintaining desire for shit that you don't need, materialism. I think the cane isn't in the news very often, but there are big parts of society. At the top, there are lots of people in the city, rich lawyers using it, but no one's talking about that, because I think in that situation, it doesn't harm productivity, so it's kind of like, you know, they'll just let them carry on to the thing. So in the case of psychedelics in particular, the fact that it forces you to question things about yourself, to self-reflect, giving people a different way of looking at yeah, things exactly. as well, which can be dangerous in exactly. the sense of you won't be able to manipulate them as well. Yeah, and I think DMT and things like that are necessary in your life that don't really bring you happiness. It shows you that. My name's Bob. I'm a high school chemistry teacher. And one of the many things I do in my free time is to make and use DMT. And the fact that the world is as messed up as it is at the moment, and there are all these things that we need to sort out, I feel like my life mission as a teacher is to share knowledge, share passion, and this particular interest of mine in DMT fits. It gives me an outlet to help people to question things. That's what I try and do as a teacher. My, my whole life in class is to get kids to ask questions, to think for themselves. DMT is just one mechanism that I use to help people to think about things. Uh, Ishtar has, has been kind of with me all the way in this process. Uh, learning about it, trying things out. And today we're going to be turning this raw ingredient into DMT. We're going to be extracting DMT from it. I'm going to run you through the process of how to go from this to the final product. So this is a root bark that comes from a, a tree in South America, the most of And it's one of thousands of different plants that contain DMT. But this particular one is, is known to have a very high concentration. So it's just heating up some water, so we cook it up basically. Yeah. We're going to keep a smaller amount, don't we? That's okay. So the next stage is just one of these acids which has been in the news a lot recently. You see this vapor? So this is vapor that comes off acid, which is quite nasty. So... Turn it off. Turn it off, yeah. So some of, some of these fundamental things, it's from what I teach, but, but the specifics about DMT, you can find out online. There's lots and lots of good and bad. I don't sell to the general public, but people will buy a gram that's kind of a standard weight, but that's actually enough for 20 individual doses in, in one gram. And this is not the kind of stuff where you'd want to do it every day. You know, if you have some profound experience of any other kind, you know, life-changing epiphany type experience, you don't immediately want to dive back in. You, you sort of, oh, you have to kind of soak it up and assimilate it in your mind. Jesus. Careful, careful. I was going to say, just hold on to that. There you go. There you go. In my experience, and what I've tried and what I've seen, I just do DMT in its intensity is by far and away the strongest a psychedelic that I've tried. When I discovered it first off, it was a kind of mythical substance that it was known to be this ultimate psychedelic. And, uh, realized even just from the very first time I tried it that it was different, that it was, there was something fundamentally different about it. In, in the DMT sort of headspace, you can't consciously change what you see. I mean, I've got used to what it does. I've got used to the feeling of where it takes me, and I've over time become more comfortable with, you know, the inside of my head. Most people who I shared it with, they do it once and they're like, wow, that was incredible. I'm, I'm glad I did it, but I'm not too bothered about doing it again. But it's not a substance that you feel like you want to to have it or that you need it, so you won't crave it as such? As friends, we've kind of been on a similar journey um, for a while, kind of 
yeah, sort of exploring inside and outside. If I'm feeling that things are out of balance, if I'm a bit messed up, which let's face it, I am most of the time, but when it gets to certain points, this just slaps you around the face and says, that's what your problem is, you idiot. So this is not the kind of thing you want to do every day. It, it's, it's quite profound. I mean, to the individual, it can be quite traumatic. If, for example, you experience past trauma that comes out, as it does. Uh, I mean, Ishtar had that the last time. Um, it just shows you whatever you have in your mind, yeah. really. That's it. That's all it does. It just shows you what's in your mind. So then you ask yourself, well, what's in my mind? Should I go again? Yeah, okay. I think that's done, actually. There's not much coming up. So, yeah, we just, this is the first lot, and... So that's fine. That's pretty good, actually. So the next stage is going to be to wash through... Uh, a solvent to get rid of the plant oils and fats. In the UK, you can only really get these small fuel things. So yeah, you look a bit uh, suspicious sometimes going to Poundland and buying every single tin. <laughs> you go out clunking, getting funny looks from people. This, and the solvent that you use at the end, it's highly flammable. And there was one time where I kind of left it a bit too long. And of course this was highly volatile, very hot solvent, the vapors of this hot solvent, which went up all the way to the ceiling. So I sort of put it out pretty quickly, but uh, yeah, then I had to figure out how to repaint my ceiling in an hour and a half before my wife came back. Uh, no one knew anything, it was, all, it was all perfect, but that was scary. That was, uh, <laughs> those, are the, those are the screw ups that teach you the most if you get away with them. So we're processing a kilo in total and on the street, I think it's about twice cocaine, about 100 pounds per, per gram or thereabouts on the street, on the silk road or on the dark web. And then you mix it up. Patience, you get enough patience. That, just to be safe. So we're now taking the acid solution that we've washed the oil through to get rid of the fats. You'll see it starts to turn gray, and you keep going. So it's black swirls, and then that's when the DMT has been completely released. So then we collect it, put that in the freezer. And then all the crystals come out of the solvent and sort of layer on the bottom like snow, and left with this frosted layer of crystals on the bottom of your container, like I use a box like this. Stick that in the, in the freezer. The final product we produce here uh, is for vaporizing only. I'm on a life mission to a sort of almost religious zeal to share it around so that other people can experience this. Because of what it had done for me, to look inside myself and figure myself out and improve myself, self-discovery in different ways. DMT has the capacity to become abstracted from yourself. You start to see yourself objectively, not in this normal form. It's a very unusual sort of abstract type experience. And so you see everything. You see the good, you see the bad, then it can be unpleasant. So that's when you hear reports of people having bad experiences just because that's not what they were after. They didn't know that would happen. And it can be very profound the way that it just sort of comes and gives you a big cosmic slap around the face and gives you the answer to the question you didn't know you should have been asking in the first place.